Hey, good morning, everybody. All right, got the, uh, this is great doing these videos because I can see if I got coffee in my mustache. Uh, it saves me time. I don't have to walk in the, <laughs> let's go look in the mirror. But, um, man, I'm just going to kind of just, Holy Spirit, God, what's going on? Just kind of lead me. Let's just talk about some things. I got different topics that um, I really think we need to, to, to take a look at that I'm looking at right now. And just going to wing it. So uh, we'll ask the Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, man, I'm so grateful for you. Man, again, you just had me walk freaking tall and, and walk through the freaking fire. Walk through the, literally the valley of the shadow of death, man. And, and that's a real place over in Israel. That's a real valley where that's where they buried everybody. And that was not a good place and not a good place to be walking through. And, and Father God, I, you know, it's like, wow, again, you know, you, you, you put me right there next to this freaking, I don't know what to call it, total complete train wreck that I could have very easily been involved in and you saved me from it. And I, I thank you Lord from that, for that. And, um, I'm wearing this little device and it's working great and, makes total, uh, you know, electronic sense to me as to what's going on and what it's doing for me. And I feel great. And I thank you, Lord, that my shoulder this morning and my, my wound site is not as sore as it had been. And, uh, hopefully I'll stay off the Advil today, but heavenly father, we just ask that you be with us and be here and let your Holy spirit, uh, help us father to really have a better understanding and grip on what's going on right now and how we should be carrying ourselves and what we should be doing in our lives. And we just pray for all the people, Lord, that are out here listening, that all of us, Lord, are strengthened and encouraged and energized by but what you have for us and what, what you have in store for us, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, like I said, I've, I've got a couple of things. Um, I'm sorry for yesterday. I sat near watching the video again last night and about 19 minutes minutes into it i was getting bored watching me move trees around <laughs> but you know God, man i my, my i i can spend literally the entire rest of my life out here working on this land and and you know whittling on this place and um man that's my job and so um a few years ago about four years ago i uh um, I, I went online and I found, uh, an organization, um, of, of Christian ministers where you could take, uh, online courses and become an ordained minister. And so I did that. Um, and you know, they gave me a little certificate and all that stuff. And I mean, I'm legally an ordained minister. I can go and uh, I think if I go register with the state of Alaska, I can marry people and, and, you know, do ordained minister stuff. And so I got that, but I never really did anything with it. And, um, you know, God had asked me, I think I told the story if I, if I'd speak for him and I really didn't know how I was going to do that. And, you know, I'm, I'm automatically thinking that, oh, I'm going to pass for some church or, or, you know, and I'm just like, well, who's going to hire me? I got this online piece of paper that took me only a year to get. I mean, what kind of credential is that, right? Um, you know, I don't have a theological or a master's or a doctorate degree in, in, in church. And, and so, but God's had me speak for him in a, in a different way and in different times. And especially now with, with what happened with this channel and what, what's going on with, with this. So, where I'm going with this is that I'm going to go ahead and go to LegalZoom. I'm going to go ahead and get a, a non-for-profit and the J.P. Dunamis Lodge Ministries and just evangelistic uh, type ministry and and go ahead and, and pull the trigger that way um, from tax standpoint and, you know, uh, from an accounting standpoint. And uh, it's not going to cost that much, a few hundred bucks for the docs. And uh, I think it's closer to about 400 bucks for everything for them to monitor it and for them to, you know, file everything I need with the state and, and all that and, and assign me a ESN number and all that. But I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger 
and I'm going to be in full-time service to the Lord. That's my new job description. I'm, I'm a minister. And so, man, I really got to step it up. And number one being, you know, uh, um, not consciously using foul language, uh, but, uh, we'll see how all that goes. If it's appropriate, it's appropriate. But I think that I can, I can articulate what I need to get across without really being able to, you know, having to use that. And so we can simulate using curse words. How's that? I'll simulate it as best I can. I'll get my point across, but I won't actually, I'll try to refrain from actually saying it. How's that? But, um, I, th I think that, uh, it can be done in fun and in jest and just, you know, just, just, you know, to lighten things up sometimes because I know I need things lightened up sometimes. So, um, I just want to keep it like it has been and that's just real and, and just, just, you know, share with other people what God's sharing with me and talk about things that are going across my brain and, and getting feedback and input and doing research. I mean, that's all we can do. I mean, we're, we're seeking the Lord, man. I'm, I'm, I'm able to seek him every day and, and walk with him every day and, and, you know, uh, try my best to, uh, you know, to serve him and to serve others the best I can on a daily basis. And, and, Whatever's going on in the world, whatever the time frame is, whatever time we have left here, I don't know if I'll ever finish this place or not. Probably not. I don't see it happening. I think the rapture's imminent. I think it's going to happen soon. I'm not going to even worry about this. And I said it yesterday. I'm just going to stay in the field and keep working. And and every day we're supposed to uh, look for Jesus in the clouds and, and uh, not worry about tomorrow be anxious for nothing and, and, um, to trust him. And, you know, it, it's like faith is, is three things or three separate things, but they're all the same thing. And faith is the hope of things unseen and, and being anxious for nothing is, is trusting God and having faith and God is trusting God and, and not worrying about tomorrow is trusting God. Um, so man, there are so many ways out there, um, that, you know, what does God keep telling us over and over and over and over throughout the entire bottle to trust him? Right. So, um, man, when, I know that when you get to that point where you completely a hundred percent totally trust him you really can you have nothing to fear you have nothing to worry about and so god just put me through that again he just put me through that again i'm just like i'm not anxious about my heart quitting i'm not anxious about dying i'm not worried about that i'm not anxious about leaving my family here hanging I'm not, I mean, I'm, I, I care. Yeah, but I'm not worried about it. I, just, I have no control over my life. Jesus does. God does. Not me. So I ask him to do. I ask him to come into my life, take control of my life. Help me. Let me be more like you. He's like, okay, I'll do it for you. Just give it to me. And I'm like, okay. And so he just had me give it to him again in front of all of you. And, and so hopefully I did all right. Um, that was my biggest thing. I don't, I don't want to be a whiner. I don't want to be a crybaby. I don't want to be a pansy. You know, <laughs> I'm supposed to be a tough guy, right? You know, <laughs> and, and I'm supposed to be able to, you know, just stand there and get whacked. Uh, and so, um, so you know, just, just like Meshach and, hey, Andy, what's those three dudes' names that got put in the furnace? Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And um, they went in there and didn't even come out smelling like smoke. 
you know, Daniel in the lion's den. I, I mean, just story after story after story. David and Goliath. I mean, <laughs> you know, this stuff's for real. If you're really up and you're really, man, you're really, really with everything you've got, seeking the Lord and trying to hang with him, man. <laughs> He's the man. It's as advertised, you know. Man, I couldn't get any, I don't know. I was like, man, how much worse are you going to make it on me, Lord? <laughs> you know? um, oh my God, my arms are, they just freaking stabbed me, man. I'm totally, totally bruised and abused and I hate needles. It's like the worst thing in the, that's a damn puncture wound. I don't care what anybody says. They're putting a freaking hole in you and making you bleed every time they put a needle in your arm. And man, they're getting me like every four hours. It's like, that's the worst thing. I, I mean, I hate that. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, dang. It's like getting snake bit over and over and over again. It's like, who's dumbass enough to, excuse me. See, there you go. Who's a dumbass and likes that? Not me. I hate that stuff. So, uh, <laughs> but man, I'm just so grateful that uh, they got modern technology. Um, two years ago, they told me that a device would not help me. And and that heart doc told me, he says, yeah, you, and he told me three years ago, you got about five to live. And he told me three years ago, when that all started, you know, the fall, I started seeing the current doc uh, January or February of 2020. And my heart, all my heart, severe heart stuff started September, October of 2019. And they told me then that, man, you got about five years to live. You can't, we can't, there's nothing we can do for you. And, and then again, two years later, yeah, you know, uh, another heart doc. Yeah, a device isn't going to help you. And, you know, a pacemaker or any of that stuff's not going to help you. But I, I guess my heart changed enough and degraded in such a way to where this would help and they and they they have the 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 latest technology now where um you know it's amazing and i get up in the morning i gotta leave, leave my bluetooth on and my phone close because it automatically reads what's been going on with my my device and then transmits it to uh the the headquarters of the device and then you know they their computer looks at it and if there's anything at all abnormal um they immediately call me and and so and then i've got the added protection of the defibrillator if if my heart goes wacky and starts doing something crazy like cardiac arrest it'll automatically shock me back uh to where i need to be which Man, what an, man, I got, man, what a bonus I just got. I mean, it, it, my heart going bad turned out to be a good thing. My heart doing what it was doing here the last few months turned out to be exactly what I needed to have happen. Another example of our ways are not God's ways. God let this happen to me to extend my life. He let this bad circumstance happen to me to extend my life. By, by turning this heart thing in such a way to where now, okay, they can do something. Hallelujah. And, you know, you, we talk about thanking God in our, in our adversity and praising him. Before I went back into the hospital again, after I'd been out a few days, I mean, that night before I went back in, um, I, I just, that's all I did. I was just going to praise you, God. I can't lose. If they fix me, great. If they can't fix me, I'm coming to see you. I can't lose. And so, man, I just, I, I just want everybody to be able to, to have that level of faith and that trust and that reassurance and that confidence that you know, 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 
that God has got your back, no matter what you're going through, no matter how difficult your circumstances might be. And, and there are so many people out there that have it so much worse than me, dealing with all kinds of things for years and years and years and years and years, dealing with all kinds of abusive people in their lives and I don't have it anywhere near as bad as a lot of people do. And my heart just goes out to you guys and, and you ladies that, I mean, I don't, I don't want to see anybody suffer. No one, no one. And, and so, man, I, I just, I don't know what I can do or what I can say to help. Or I, I do, I, I sincerely pray and I, I consciously really you know, ask God, you know, this person, you know, exactly what they're at, you, where they're at, you know, exactly what they're doing. I mean, I try to take time to really listen to other people so that I know what I can help pray for. So that I, I know what I can ask God to help do, or, or if I have any suggestion or, or input or my advice, or if you want it or not, that I might be able to encourage you to hang in there and, and to keep seeking God and keep trusting him. And, and so, um, but yeah, man, Jesus is alive and well, and, and the Holy Spirit is working like crazy right now, bringing a lot of people back to God and back to Jesus and a lot of new people to the Lord. And, and, you know, the longer this drags out, the more people that are going to heaven with us. Um, that's the way I look at it. And so, you know, I, I, God knows exactly the, 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 the last person, the very last person on this planet, he knows who they are and where they're at and when that's going to happen, where he says, okay, let's flip the switch and let's turn the page. And that's exactly what it's going to be like. And, and so I just pray that, um, you know how, how, how to be ready for this is just to take it a day at a time. You know how to be prepared for this? Just take it a day at a time. And, and Jesus said to look for him every day in the clouds, every day. And people have been listening to that for 2000 plus years now. And, and, you know, a hundred years, they were supposed to be living like that. Like Jesus was coming today. And a lot of people did live that way. And, and so, uh, a lot of people were not distracted. A lot of people really needed God and, and, and especially in our country, there's a lot of, our country was full of very devout Christian people and, and started by very devout, honest Christian people, very smart young men, attorneys, engineers. I mean that, and, and you know, that were very, very gifted intellectually and, and were very devout in their faith and very gifted, uh, by God via the Holy Spirit. And so, um, you know, um, America has been a very bountiful place. I still live in a very bountiful place. And, um, so, uh, we're just trying to make the best of it right now. And it's all we can do. And, uh, um, um, trying not to be anxious or, or upset or worried. Um, I guess I could pull up a, a list of scriptures about not being worried, um, and start reading those. So, um, let's go. I think that's what a lot of people are doing. Being worried. Okay. I mean, it's natural to worry. You, it means you care, right? Um, all right. Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, 
with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Philippians 4, 6. Boy, it's really hard to not be anxious for stuff, isn't it? Um, what I've found is, is, and what has made it easier for me to not be anxious is that I've been at this with God, at this relationship, walking with him daily for long enough to know that I really do not have any control. I do to a certain extent, but the big picture, the overall grand, grand plan and scheme, I have absolutely zero control over. He has all of that control. As a pilot, as a construction dude, I have lots of control. And when I was doing those things, you know, I, I, I'm very, you know, I'm not very anxious, but I, I'm very concerned. You know, when I was flying, I was, had a lot of anxiety, but not anxiety to the point where it was debilitating. It was just a very high level of concern for safety, for the aircraft, mechanical, you know, condition for the weather, um, you know, making sure that, um, you know, I was up on all of the, the TFRs, the temporary flight restrictions that I didn't fly through, you know, some big red circle on the map that I wasn't supposed to fly through and get intercepted by F-18s. I mean, I, I, I had a lot of, of things to worry about and I'm not going to call it anxiety. It's just, I had a lot of things to worry about and to make sure that I took care of and that I, that I, you know, and then the same way building stuff and, and you know, making sure that it's structurally sound, that it's, you know, not going to blow over uh, in the wind or one little earthquake and it falls down up, up here. I got to really beef things up to make sure that it has a chance of, you know, standing up for a little while anyway, um, until it, if God's going to collapse my house in an earthquake, he's going to do it. I don't care how stout I make it. But, um, so not being anxious about things that you can't control, and, and we should all, if, if there's any advice, if this is something that you cannot control, health situations or relationship situations or, man, you, you just, if you don't have any control, you got to let God have the control and then let him deal with it. Let him have it. And and whatever whatever comes of it, that's him. It's not you. You didn't bring it on yourself. You didn't worry yourself sick. You, you didn't, you know, get impatient and, and screw things up by not waiting, you know, a little bit longer by being impatient, whatever. Man, when, when it's definitely things that are out of your control, then you just got to let him have it. And and just like with what I just went through last three and a half weeks, I mean, I just had to let him have it. And there's, I know he could take me at any time. He could have taken me multiple times many times and 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 statistically there's a lot of men that are dead right now from the very first thing i ever had happen to me i mean my heart i mean they called it the widow maker heart heart attack and but that was god's will for me to survive that to recover from that and then it was his God, it was God's will again for me, you know, five, almost six years later to suffer the damage that I suffered from that cholesterol lowering injection that I took. So, um, but, um, man, just praying that everybody right now, that God would just pour out his Holy Spirit upon everybody that's asking right now. Let's just do that. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray, Father God, that you would just pour out your Holy Spirit upon everyone listening today about being anxious. There's so many lies right now. Disinformation, misinformation. Well, you know what? We know who the father of all disinformation and misinformation is. It's also called lies. We know who the father of lies are. 
Father God, we pray for your Holy Spirit's protection, Lord, over all of us that are listening right now, that you would just bind Satan, Lord Jesus, in your name, so that he has no control over anyone anymore in regard to being anxious or worried or upset about things, Lord, that only you can take care of, that you can control, and, and that you can... Um, you know, resolve for us, Lord. We just pray, Father God, that everyone right now down here has that spirit of your peace that surpasses all understanding and none of these fiery darts from the enemy, Lord, penetrate or hurt any of us in any way. We rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, for a hedge of protection around us. We pray for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to be upon us every day. Let us all wake up, Lord, and, and walk with you in the cool of the day, in the early morning. Spend some time just hanging out with you and, and asking you, Lord, to please be present in our life all day long like you've never been before. We really need you right now, Lord, to protect all of us right now from what all is going on here. And and Father God, we just pray that we would be a light to others, Lord, that are struggling, that we would be a, a place of sanctuary, a, 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 a welcome place to them, Lord, to, to be able to come and, and, and have fellowship and to, and to speak openly and honestly about anything that might be bothering them, that we all might be able to help one another, Father God, right where we're at, right in our in our in our communities and our jobs and in in our personal lives, Lord, and we just pray, Father God, that that you would just continue to renew our strength daily, Lord, so that we can let you actually live through us like we're supposed to do, and that others may see you in us like it's supposed to be. We just pray, Father God, that you continue to to bless me and my family and provide what we need so that I can continue doing what I should be doing. I am not worried about that, and I know that you will provide what we need. And 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 if, if if I don't have it and you don't give it to me, then I don't need it. And so, Father God, we just thank you so much for all that you've been doing. I thank you for this opportunity to finally get to help you back. You've helped me my whole life. And I, I consider it just an honor and a blessing, Lord, to get to speak for you and to witness, tell others how wonderful and great you've been to me and how, how much my life has been changed and how, how looking back on over the whole picture, Lord, that it's all just been perfect. And, and you have... Let every single thing happen and done every single thing in my life for a reason and a purpose. And that's for me to know you and be with you, have a relationship with you. And now, hopefully, Lord, to be able to give you the glory and the credit to to. Man, just share with other people what you've shared with me. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. And I thank you, Lord, for my my newfound health. And I pray, Lord, that you help me with some portion control and getting a few pounds off. And that uh, I'm able to actually accomplish some stuff this spring. And we pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So, um... Yeah, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm blown away. I'm just blown away. Um, here's another scripture, John 4, 18, and there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. So what did... What did Jesus do, man, for us? He loved us, right? 
unconditionally. That's what he's about. Greatest commands are love him first and then love one another second, right? So I'm praying that everybody feels the love of Jesus in their heart and that that's, this fear is driven out. You have no fear. No anxiety. You're not worried. And you're able to control your legitimate concern and caring, you know, to and not let your emotions just completely trash you. So, um, all right, I'm going to get off of here. I appreciate everybody, and I look forward to speaking to you guys again. Have a good, good rest of your, your Saturday.